Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. We're in Avid in this short tutorial, looking at Sapphire's Builder. We're going to see how the Builder lets us combine and customize Sapphire's effects to create our own effect, using one of the new presets for Sapphire 2021, Quick Film Finish. We're in Avid now to have a little look at what we can do with some of these fast Builder effects. And the first thing we need is to add Builder to the timeline. So we can do this in effect. If I just search for S underscore effect, you'll find S effect here, which is in the Sapphire Builder category. So if I just drag this over the top uh, and I'll apply this as a filler layer, just over everything, and we can of course apply it to single filters as well. And the first thing you'll notice as we apply Builder is that nothing changes. That's because the default state for S effect is to do nothing. There are no effects added. So let's have a look at our presets. So in the preset browser, we have a category straight for builder effects. And this shows us a large number of presets that we have available for builder. These can be things like um, fast sky enhancement, uh, creating sort of flickering neon effects, or of course, as we've seen in previous tutorials, uh, adding in you know motion backgrounds and other sort of textured objects here. Now we don't want any of these. I'm going to go and search into my presets, and I'm going to search for quick. And this gives me my quick film finish. And the quick film finish is designed to add just a little bit more spice to your color corrected clips. So this isn't you know color grading. Uh, this just adds on a bit of a finishing touch to, to you know, bring everything together. And what this effect allows us to do is it allows us to chain different Sapphire effects together into one custom effect, which is exactly what this is. So if we start at the top, we have our sharpened frequency. So we have the ability to uh, add a bit of sharpness um, to maybe you know, bring out some of the, the high frequency details. The original source here was shot from a drone it's always going to be a little bit too sharp anyway. I'm actually just going to turn off all of the other effects that we have here. So I'm going to come to my glow darks, turn the darkness to zero, turn the ultra glow brightness to zero, and turn my scale CC to zero, just so we can really focus on what this other stuff is doing. So if we look at the sharpened frequency, the blur amount at the top actually doesn't blur things, it sharpens stuff. Uh, so we we really want a light touch with this, you know, uh, very, very low numbers. And the blur amount two here, this blurs things a little bit as well. So this can help just take the edge off. And that's really what we need with this particular piece of footage. If I turn this to uh, full res here for a sec. A lot of drone footage introduces a uh, high frequency noise. So that's, we just want to take off some of that high frequency buzzing. So I'm just going to put this to about 0.03, sorry, 0.003, right, really the smallest number that we can possibly have. And there we go. And that, that will just help to take some of, the, uh, to some of the edge off. And we can combine the sharpening and blurring if we want to as well. Uh, and that can create some quite interesting effects. The next one we have is the film effect itself. And probably the most important one here is the scale CC. So this scales the color correction down. So by default, this is probably set to, I think this is set to 0 0.5. So we still have you know, the ability to, uh, to turn it up and down. There we go. And I'll bring this uh, yeah, around about 0 0.5 again. And we have negative exposure and print exposure. And these are just going to change up any sort of brightness and over bright stuff that's, that's happening here. So I'm going to make this a little bit darker. Make sure that nothing is, uh, is blowing out there. So, so far, you know, it's a very subtle effect. But it's just adding a little bit of depth into that. I kind of like where we're going with this. Uh, we can add grain as well which have with our grain amplitude and we have a vignette darkness. So we can turn the vignette up and down to add a little bit of subtle or, you know, not so subtle vignetting. We have ultra glow built directly into this effect as well. So I can turn up my ultra glow here. Let's turn up the, the brightness just a little bit. 
This gives us a nice diffuse glow over the entire thing. I could, you know, change the uh, the parameters up a little bit more, but we'll we'll keep moving through. And at the bottom, I have my glow darks, just to bring up a little bit of uh, soft misting in the shadows. So this this can really help to kind of take the edge off of uh, harsh shadows and just uh, make skin just to look a little bit nicer as well. So we take a quick look at the before and after. You know, it's kind of a, a nice little subtle effect already, but you know, that's just the, the, the tip of what we can do with this. Because all this is showing us here are the most common controls that you might want to use. The actual secret source is in here. If we go edit quick film finish, and turn that on, that will actually launch up the effect builder and we can really see what's going on underneath the hood. So in the builder, we can see all of the effects that we have used to build up this main effect. And I'll zoom in just a little bit so we can see this a bit better. And I can right click to move around the workspace. And a lot of these builder presets have uh, notes left for us to tell us what's going on here. So for example, over in this area, High pass for sharpening, so that's the sharpen frequency there. Adjust blur one for sharpening, low values work best. Blur two can be used for denoise, but generally keep at zero. So, you know, just really what we uh, we talked about earlier. The other thing that we have, if we ignore all the rest of the stuff that's going on in there, is we have access to the full film effect. So we can change up things like our uh, negative film, or our print film and get different looking results just with that there, just by changing that up. And in our builder effect, these aren't gonna be exposed. If we just applied the regular film effect, we'd have these available to us, but we wouldn't have the rest of the stuff all in one nice, neat package. The other thing that you can do if you want to customize this effect more is we look at the right hand side here, you can see the parameters that we're gonna be looking at when we move back into Avid. So I have my negative and print exposure turned on. If I wanted to have my input gamma, my output gamma turned on as well, for example, in Avid, I can just have those selected and I'll hit OK. Then when we come back, it will update with the new controls we've got added. And we can see over in my film effect now, I have input gamma and output gamma available to me in my effect editor. So I'll take that down. I'll come in, I'll maybe take the grain amplitude down as well. Let's have a little look at that in, uh, in full quality. And let's play that back. And that's playing back quite nicely. Um, even though we have you know, multiple effects chained together, we're getting a fairly decent playback speed. And you can see because we added this over as a, uh, a filler layer over the top of all of our timeline, let's take that over there, we're now getting the same effect across multiple clips. Obviously, if I wanted to come in and make this effect a little bit different, I need to customize it a little bit more. All I have to do is just split the, uh, the filler layer, the adjustment there, and I can go back into my effect controls. And now I can change this up as I need to. So maybe add a little bit more. Uh, color correction in there and we'll have a little look at the before and the after i can definitely see i want to up my ultra glow there as well so by using the effect builder we can chain different effects and filters together and build up our own custom effects and by looking through the presets and coming into the builder effects you can start to get an idea of how other people have begun to build up different styles and different effects. But if all you want to do is just quickly adjust the parameters that are exposed, there's enough variety here to get you through many different types of projects that you're working on. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about Sapphire Builder or any of the Sapphire effects, then head on over to boriseffects.com. Here you can find the latest product news, a host of free video tutorials, and the ability to download free trials of any of the Boris Effects products that you want. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I'll see you again soon.